I'm Bill Hulahan, a member of the Law Society ADR Committee. I've been asked to give you a bit of an overview in relation to the Mediation Act. The Act came online on the 1st of January 2018. The rules came into force on the 22nd of January. The Act specifies certain things that you must do as a solicitor. Section 14 says that you must advise a client in writing in relation to all the advantages and the benefits of mediation. You must tailor that advice to the particular circumstances of your client's case. If you look at the Act, not very long, only about 13 pages, you can read through it in a very short period of time, but you'll see that it's broken down into six parts. Section 2 has the usual definitions. It explains uh, by way of definition what a mediation is, what a mediator is, what an agreement to mediate is, and that must be in writing and must contain certain things which are set down in the Act. You must tell them about the, the advantages in relation to the particular dispute and why it would benefit them. You must talk about the benefits of mediation, the cost savings that would be involved. And when you've done it, you must then swear a statutory declaration that you have done all that and file that with the proceedings. You don't have to file that before commencing the proceedings. You can commence in case you've got a statute problem, but once you've done it, uh, you must then file the declaration before you can proceed further. The Act also sets out uh, what the Act actually applies to. Now, it sets out that in a curious way because it says what it doesn't apply to and by inference it applies to everything else. So there's a list of things such as the fact that it doesn't apply to anything that's capable of going to the Workplace Relations Commission. That doesn't mean you can't mediate an employment issue which could go to the WRC but the Act then doesn't govern it. It doesn't govern arbitrations or any other adjudicative process. It doesn't govern uh, any dealings with the Revenue Commissioners. They are literally a law unto themselves um, and certain other things. It also has certain safeguards built in for the protection of children, vulnerable people, etc. So even if the parties agree, it's still subject to a court approval, a bit like agreements between parties in family law proceedings. Curiously, a solicitor in Limerick recently asked me a question. He had issued proceedings in his firm name against a client for fees which were due. Uh, but he had done it in the firm name, not in his own name. And he asked the question, do I now have to sit down, write myself as solicitor to myself as client, advise myself as to the benefits of mediation, acknowledge to myself that I've done it, and then swear a declaration that I have done it? And I said, because you issued the proceedings in the firm name, not in the personal name, yes, that's what the Act says you must do. So, in a nutshell, that is what you must do. Again, if you want more information, there are further videos available, and you can log on to the Lost City website. Thank you.